Welcome to the Carolinas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers Virtual College Fair. Thank you very much for joining us today. Before we get started with our presentation, just a few quick housekeeping items to go over. Uh, the first is that we want to remind all of our attendees uh, that you can interact with the panelists and ask any questions you may have utilizing the Q&A feature. You can pose your question to a specific panelist or you can ask a general question to any and all of the panelists. Also, just a reminder that your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. And there are two other blocks of sessions this evening, so if you have yet to sign up for those, please do feel free to do so. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same registration website. Without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and turn it over to our first panelist, which will be Davidson Davy Community College. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kayla Nasip, and I'm the Director of Recruitment and Admissions at Davidson Davy Community College. I'm joined by Jenny Ferguson, one of our college recruiters in the chat, who will be fielding and answering questions throughout my presentation. So let's get started. To give you a better sense of our community, I wanted to start with some quick facts. So you might be wondering, who is Davidson Davy Community College? Formerly Davidson County Community College, we changed our name in January 2021 to be more inclusive of the communities that we serve, both Davidson and Davy counties in North Carolina. We do have multiple locations to make it easy and convenient for you to continue your education with us, regardless of where you are. And our main campus is in Davidson County, um, so right in Lexington. You'll be able to take advantage of countless opportunities due to our mid-sized community, while still benefiting from the small class sizes where professors get to know you and help you reach your goals. And with over 40 programs to choose from, you'll be sure to find a program that's the best fit for you. We do offer multiple entry terms with eight week courses. So we have a fall one, fall two, spring one, spring two, and summer terms. And if you're looking for the real college experience, you'll get that here with a number of various clubs, organizations, and athletic programs to choose from. I've already talked a little bit about some of the benefits here um, in our facts, but to give you some why Davidson Davy highlights, I thought I'd share that students have a ton of options when it comes to their academic schedule. So you can really balance school, work, and life easily. We have small class sizes, meaning your professors know you on a personal level and can really help support you in meeting your personal and academic goals while you're at Davidson Davy and beyond. And speaking of um, some of the hands-on opportunities that we have here at Davidson Davy, we are really well known for our strong workforce development that's embedded into our curriculum. So if you're interested in the STEM fields or interested in getting career experience, you'll be able to gain that in the classroom here. Um, we also have a lot of opportunities for students to take advantage of dual enrollment credits while in high school through our CCP programs. This all comes at free tuition costs for students. So why not graduate with your associate's degree for free? We also have a number of four-year college partnerships that enable for that easy transition to your bachelor's degree if that's something that you're interested in after um, coming to Davidson Davy. And you won't have to sacrifice the traditional college field because we do have a number of opportunities in student life, athletics, and even opportunities through our international office for students to study abroad. And again, this all comes at um, a cost that is really um, competitive and low for students so that you're not graduating with a bunch of student loan debt. We know that money matters. Student loan debt is at an all time high and students at Davidson Davy don't feel like they have to compromise their academic and campus experience for cost. As seen here, there's a huge savings and for the quality of education that you, you gain at Davidson Davy um, Community College as opposed to other colleges in the state. If Davidson Davy sounds like it might be a good fit for you, I'll go over some next steps so that you can enroll with us. The first step is, and the second step kind of go hand in hand. So the first one is to complete your online application. And the second is to complete the residency determinations um, status. So in addition, you'll want to submit your FAFSA, request your transcripts, register and attend the enrollment information session and orientation, and then meet with your advisor to get started on registering for classes. So to complete the application, we are an open enrollment school. You can complete the application at any time to enroll with us. However, we recommend that you complete the enrollment process at least two weeks prior to the start of each term. So this is for all programs except our programs with special criteria. Those, some of these are listed on the screen here. 
These are competitive programs that have separate application processes. Most of these programs are fall entry only and the deadlines for fall 2021 enrollment unfortunately have already passed. In addition, there is an application specific to students interested in the CCP or College and Career Promise dual enrollment program. And for more information, you can always contact us in admissions. The next step, completing RDS. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the RDS process. To complete RDS, go to ncresidency.org and include your RCN on the application so we can verify your residency, hopefully in state, and we can um, add that to your financial aid package. So the cost savings I mentioned earlier is in part due to lower tuition and fees, but also our ability to award financial aid to about 75% of our students, which we can't do unless we have your FAFSA. So to complete your FAFSA, go to fafsa.ed.gov and be sure to send it to Davidson Davy Community College. Your financial aid package could include federal or state grants based on financial need, like the Pell Grant, which is money that you don't have to pay back, loans, which is money that you will have to pay back, and or scholarships awarded for academic or personal achievement. We do have our own Davidson Davy Foundation scholarships to help fund students' education, and we are still accepting FAFSAs for summer 2021, and our fall 2021 FAFSA deadline is July 1st. We encourage all students to submit their transcript to us. And while we don't require transcripts for general admissions, some programs do. High school transcripts can be unofficial, but if you've taken any college level courses, we will need an official college transcript to evaluate and verify your courses for transfer credit. So you've completed your application and RDS and submitted the FAFSA and now you're admitted. So what's next? You'll complete your online enrollment information session, and after you complete the EIS, our Career Services Department will be in touch with you about completing your online new student orientation. After you complete orientation, you'll meet with an advisor, create your course schedule, register for classes, and then start at Davidson Davy. Our upcoming terms include summer with the start date of June 7th, and our first fall eight weeks with the start date of August 16th. If you want to learn more about our community, you can fill out a request for information form, follow us on social media, and or join us for a socially distanced campus tour with one of our student ambassadors. Scan the QR code to register for your campus tour today. And if you have any questions or want to learn more, please don't hesitate to reach out. My and Jenny's contact information is listed here. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, David and Davey. Um, just a reminder to any attendees who recently joined us, uh, please do feel free to utilize that Q&A feature to ask any questions you have to any of the panelists at any time. But up next is Full Sail University. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Emily Miller, and I'm excited to tell you about Full Sail University this evening. So let me go ahead and share my screen, and we'll get started. You're on mute, Emily. I dropped my phone on my keyboard and I think it hit the mute button. Thank you. Um, so this is Full Sail University. Um, if you've never heard of us before, we are an entertainment, media, art, and technology school located down in Orlando, Florida. So from the Carolinas, between six to eight hours to our location. And what we are is a school that's all about creativity. You know, the entertainment business has a lot to do with music, film, game design, things like that. Those are the type of programs that we offer, but they all are very creative. Our motto at Full Sail is, if you are serious about your dream, we'll take your dream seriously. And we are very serious about that. We're committed to, you know, if you have a creative dream, something that keeps you up at night, you are willing to do whatever it takes to get there, then we're going to do whatever it takes to help you achieve that on our end. So I mentioned that we have very creative degree programs. Right here is our areas of study. We currently have over 50 bachelor's degrees that you could choose from, but they fall into each of these different categories. So if you see an area that piques your interest and you think, hey, I want to get into technology or I'd love to learn more about the gaming programs, just let me know and I can send you the individual programs that we offer. Each of our degree programs, though, is a little bit different than what you may expect or what you may find at a traditional university. So the first thing that's a little bit different is that all of our programs are accelerated. At Full Sail, instead of taking four years to complete a bachelor's degree, it only takes about two. That's from start to finish. It's the same amount of credits, 
but we accelerate our programs so that you can get out more quickly. Um, for an on-campus program, you'd be able to complete it in close to 20 months. And for an online program, it would be closer to 29 months. The next thing is that we have a rolling admissions. So you can apply throughout the year, but something unique about Full Sail is that you can also start throughout the year. You don't have to wait until the next semester. All you have to do is wait until the next month once you decide that you're ready to begin. We also have a really cool initiative for our graduates where once you graduate, you are invited to come back and retake classes in your field for free for the rest of your life. Um, and you may think like, why would I come back to college after I graduate? But for any of our programs, they're very technology heavy. You know, for filming, you're using advanced cameras. For gaming, you're working in engines and on consoles that change all the time. You wanna make sure that you are still familiar with that technology so you can be relevant in your industry and stay employed. That's why we offer for our students to come back and retake these courses. And lastly, we have a big focus on career development. We wanna make sure that all of our graduates not only know how to do their future job, but we also want them to know how to get a future job. So each student takes seven career modules in areas like networking, resume writing, interview skills, and they also complete a portfolio project during their time at Full Sail. That way, when they are applying for jobs, they can have a collection of their best work that they can show employers as a reason to be hired. And our grads have gone on to do some really cool things throughout the years. You can see a few examples behind the words here, um, but some from just this spring, we had several com computer animation graduates, film graduates, and even technology graduates work on these two spring blockbusters, Ryan the Last Dragon and then Godzilla versus Kong. And this spring as well, we have had 85 of our graduates that were Oscar nominated, 59 that were Grammy nominated, and back in December, 271 that were nominated for game award winning games, including The Last of Us 2, which was game of the year. And beyond just these award-winning projects, our graduates have gone on to work for some very cool companies. The ones that you see on the screen here are obviously bigger companies, you know, Disney, Pixar, Blizzard, but some graduates don't want to work for a big company like that. Maybe you wanna work for an indie company, or maybe you want to start your own. That's totally fine. Graduates have gone on to do all of those things. On our campus, we have been opening back up having safety, uh, COVID safety protocols, and we're finally being able to start our clubs and organizations back up and running again, which is very exciting. Um, one that I'd like to highlight is our Armada Esports League. This is our competitive esports team. We compete in our Full Sail University Orlando Health Fortress on campus, which right now is the largest esports arena on a college campus in the United States. Our teams compete in about 10 games, including Call of Duty, Rainbow Six Siege, and Rocket League. And if you are somebody that plays Rocket League, we're actually having a high school esports tournament. It's 3v3. And the deadline to register is this coming Wednesday because the tournament starts on Friday. So if you'd like more information, let me know and I can send that to you. So if Full Sail seems like it could be a good fit, you're somebody that's interested in, in, in an entertainment, art, media, or technology degree program, this is the first thing that you would do to get started. You would reach out to our admissions department, schedule a time to call them and talk to them on the phone and do an admissions interview to see which program would be your best fit. Then I'm gonna check out the scholarship guide. We do have several scholarships coming up. Um, these two are full tuition, full ride, everything's included, including your technology. So this is for current juniors and seniors. These are both for our technology degree programs, including cybersecurity, computer science, information technology, and simulation and visualization. So if you'd like more information, you're more than welcome to scan the QR code. You can also send me an email. It's right here, elmiller at wholesale.com. I'll put that in the chat as well. And I'll put this link as well so you can check out our website. So thank you all for being here this evening. I appreciate you coming and joining. And Christopher, thank you for facilitating for us. Thank you very much, Full Sail. Um, up next, we will move to Barton College. Hello everyone, my name is Terrence Holloway. I'm an admissions counselor here with Barton College. I'm very excited that you all got the chance to learn not just about Barton, but all the other institutions joining us this evening. 
So very first thing is I want to talk about just some quick facts about the institution. So we are home of the Bulldogs. So that's my boy, Blue. Um, and we are located in Wilson, North Carolina. Um, so if you guys are familiar with North Carolina, especially just the, the landscape, we are central right in between uh, the Triangle, so Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill, and then right outside of uh, Greenville, North Carolina as well. I'm here at Barton, we're a small delegation school, so you can definitely have those small classroom sizes where the average classroom size tends to be about 16 students. And you'll also have a student population of about 1,100 students on our campus. We also offer about 50 plus majors, minors, and concentrations for all of our students to participate in as well. This listing here shows the seven schools and departments that we do offer here at Barton. Uh, within those seven schools and departments, our top four and five majors, four to five majors will be our School of Nursing, School of Business, Education, Biology, and Exercise Science. I'll give you guys just a small tidbit, just if you guys wanna get a chance to take a quick uh, screenshot of this listing here. This is gonna show you all of our majors that we do offer on our campus. And we also offer what we call your pre-professional programs. So that's for any of my students who want to go into medicine, uh, dent, uh, law, um, physical therapy, veterinarian, pharmacy, uh, you will be a part of what is called a pre-professional program where students will get their undergraduate degree in biology or chemistry or some similarity of the two, um, and then continue on with graduate level schooling there. Here at Barton, we're a division two school as well. So with us being a division two school, we compete very heavily academically, but also athletically as well. Any of our students who are interested in competing with us at the division two level, um, you do need to go through official recruiting channels uh, and that coaches will be the main point of contact for our students who have interest. Uh, we, do, uh, we are also able to offer athletic scholarships for our students. Uh, so if you guys are competing and doing a great job in your high school careers um, on the field, on the court, um, wherever you guys are playing, uh, you want to continue your, your athletic career in college, please definitely take a look at um, looking at potentially playing at the D2 level as well. Our most recent program that we just started at was our football program. Um, as we just completed our very first season this past spring, um, we're all really, really excited for all of our football players who got a chance to compete this year. Here at Barton, the biggest thing that we always like to care about for our students is we wanna make sure that we're able to help our students feel even more connected to the institution before attending Barton College. Uh, by us doing that is we have what is called our co-curricular programs or cohort programs is another word is what you'll often hear us say. All of these programs is a great way for us to help our students continue clubs, activities, or hobbies that the student find passion in doing, whether that's in their local community back at home um, or their local high school community. Um, some examples is if you are an avid student in your current high school and you want to continue that avid career in, in college, we actually offer avid for higher education. One perk is you guys no longer have to do binder checks. I hear that that is the biggest plight of, of AVID for the high school level. Other things include our nursing scholars program that allows our incoming freshman students with high academic honors to be automatically admitted into the, uh, the nursing program. And then another really big one is our esports program as well. Um, Full sale, we're going to come for you. I'm going to talk to our coach to see if we can compete against you guys. But our esports program is a great opportunity for our students to continue their gaming careers at our institution as well. And another big perk is a lot of these programs here offer some additional um, academic or uh, scholarships overall for the students to be participating in these things here. So let's talk about admissions. So we want to get you guys to Barton College. We understand that things have been so crazy and hectic due to COVID. So the past year, year and a half, it's been really hard for our students to do any testing when it comes to the SAT and ACT. So for our students, we have been able to open up a test optional pathway for students to complete their portfolio. The first thing that you, of course, that you'll need to start with is just completing our free application uh, where you can find our application for Barton either on our general website or if you are affiliated or uh, have a profile set up through Common App, we are also on Common App as well. Uh, once you submit that free app, um, the very next thing that you'll need to submit over to us will be a copy of your high school transcript. Um, and then if you have gotten a chance to take any standardized testing like the two listed here, uh, you can submit those scores, uh, but you also have the option to not submit those scores and so, uh, go through as test options. Um, if you decide to go through as a test optional student, uh, we will then just ask for our students to submit what we ask for two letters of recommendations, where one is going to be an academic letter and a character letter. 
For your academic letters, we would like those to come from your main core subjects required for you to graduate high school. Um, and then for your character letter, we'll just ask that to come from your supervisor, your guidance counselor, or a mentor that knows you really, really well. Financial aid and, and, and scholarships are something that's really important to us. So here at Barton College, we have our commitment to affordability. We're here at the college, we try to make sure that we help cover about 50, 42 to 54% of a family's need um, when it comes to affording college. Uh, so once you complete that FAFSA information uh, that the uh, first institution talked about in the beginning, uh, once you complete that FAFSA information, uh, our Office of Financial Aid will start compiling a competitive financial aid package for you and your family to help make a school like Barton College affordable for you and your family. Um, if you guys ever have any questions about any additional scholarships or aid and things like that, please feel free to reach out to us. We're an, we've been open the entire academic year, so we've been very blessed to be able to say those things, making sure that we have all the right protocols and, and, and call for all of our students. So we are open for all of our on-campus tours. So visit us physically on campus or also virtually as well. And then if you have any other questions, I'm one of our admissions counselors here and here's all of my contact information. Thank you guys. Thank you very much, Barton College. Um, now we're going to move into the second half of our presentations for this session. And up next is the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Hey there, everyone. My name is Tatiana McEnany. I'm one of the assistant directors for the Office of Undergraduate Admissions here at UNC Greensboro. I am also an alumni um, and I graduated in 2015. So really excited to be able to talk to you all about UNCG and what we have to offer. I also have my colleague, Angie Moore, who is on the chat. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and uh, type them and she will go ahead and fill through those and answer all those questions that you guys have for us. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so a couple quick facts about UNCG. Uh, we were founded in 1891 by Dr. Charles Duncan McGeever, who was an advocate for women's education, which is why our institution first started off as an all women's college. And in fact, it was the first school for women in the region. Uh, we did later on invite men on campus, so we became co-educational. And in 2017, we hit 20,000 students. So we do have 20,000 students at UNCG. Now that does sound like a whole lot, but your average class size is still gonna be about 27 students. Uh, we do have a student to faculty ratio at about 20 to one. Um, now, granted, you do have those general ed courses that tend to be um, range upwards in the 80, 90, 100 students, but we have lots of resources for our students if they still are looking for that smaller class size. We do offer over 125 different degree programs, um, over six schools and colleges. Uh, you can see on the right hand side our top 10 majors that most of our students do choose to go into um, but like i said we offer more than 125 uh, we have a lot of unique majors just to list some off we have like a fashion major it's consumer repair and retail studies we have a speech pathology and audiology we have professions and deafness um, so a lot of really really cool unique majors that a lot of students don't know that we do have so i wanted to mention that uh, we uh, have lots of ways for you to get involved. We have over 350 different student organizations uh, and groups on campus that you can get involved in uh, that range from sororities and fraternities to multicultural organizations, uh, religious-based clubs. So we really have a place here for everyone. Um, we do not require our uh, incoming freshmen to live on campus, although 80% of our freshmen do decide to live on campus. So we do give our freshmen the freedom to choose whether they want to live on campus or not. And they can also have their car on campus. So it's a big, huge um, bonus for us. And I know a lot of students uh, are wondering those questions. So make sure you are asking other colleges that. Uh, we are also a division one institution. We compete in 17 different division one sports on campus. All of our sporting events are free to our students and even the community, uh, with the exception of the men's basketball game, still free to students. It's a small ticket price for the community because we do play off campus at the Greensboro Coliseum, which is this big, huge um, uh, stadium where uh, a lot of country concerts are held, hip hop concerts, a lot of big events are held there as well. We do have our Spartan Chariot shuttle that takes all of our students to and from those games. So you wouldn't even have to worry about transportation. So what does an admitted student profile look like? You can see on the bottom left-hand side, these are our, our, I'm sorry, these are our average numbers. 
So our incoming class had an average GPA of a 3.75. Their average SAT ranged from a 1030 to a 1220. And then their average ACT was about a 23. Uh, there are, uh, our test requirements are being waived, um, not only for this year, but next year as of right now. Um, so we do encourage all of our students to take advantage of this and apply to UNCG. I do want to mentioned that these are just average numbers and these are not minimum requirements. We know that you all are more than just numbers. So um, we want to know you as a student. So we want to know what are you involved in community service, volunteer work? Are you um, a part of the band at school? Do you play a sports? Um, all of that we want to know. So make sure you take the time to fill out that application. For those of you who are not familiar, uh, we are centrally located in North Carolina, right in the middle. So right in between um, uh, you can see the major cities, Charlotte and Raleigh. We are the third largest city in North Carolina, but we're not too far away from those other major cities. I always tell students when they're looking for colleges, you want to make sure that not only do you visit the college, but you visit the city because that's very important. Um, you might not be able to go home every weekend or you might not want to. So what opportunities are around um, the city that you are going to be going to college? So let's take a look what's around Greensboro. We're about probably about five minutes away from uh, downtown Greensboro, so about a mile. We have several free transportation options to get there, so you don't need a car on campus if you decide not to bring one. If you like outdoors, we have over 90 miles of trails and greenways for you. We have lots of stadiums where we have minor league teams. For example, the Greensboro Grasshoppers is located downtown. Um, you can see so many different concerts in Greensboro. We have art galleries and festivals, if that's what you're um, interested in as well. And we are home to the International Civil Rights Museum and headquarters to Wrangler Jeans and the Fresh Market, um, along with Volvo Trucks. All right, so the application process is fairly simple. Um, you can sit, submit an online application three ways, either on the Common App, CFNC, or directly on our website using the spartanlink.uncg.edu. It is a $65 application fee. However, we do accept fee waivers like the NACAC fee waiver and the ACT fee waiver. We do need to see your high school transcripts and any uh, college transcripts if you did, if you were uh, dual enrolled. The essay is optional, um, but what, we, what you can expect in regards to tuition and fees is on the right hand side. So deadlines, uh, that first deadline, December 1st and January 15th, those are our priority deadlines. And then March 1st and July 15th are our uh, final deadlines. If you want to connect with us, here's our phone number. You can also text us um, and there is our email as well. Uh, you can also find your actual counselor um, on our find your counselor page, uncg.edu. Other than that, I hope you all enjoyed our presentation. Thank you very much, University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Um, as we move into our next presenter, I do see some questions coming in through the Q&A, so good opportunity. Just to remind everybody, do feel free to ask any questions about majors, admissions, et cetera, that you may have utilizing the Q&A. But up next is Shaw University. Good evening and good afternoon, everyone. I am Brian Wright, one of the admissions counselors here at Shaw University. I'm also an alum here. Um, so I have a video that I'm going to play and then I'm going to come back and finish up the presentation. Welcome to Shaw University a place where history is made, leaders emerge, and transformation begins. Founded in 1865, we were the first HBCU in the Southern United States. Our vibrant campus is a unique living and learning community. We are located in the heart of downtown Raleigh and a short drive from Research Triangle Park, the largest technology research park in the country. We are a place where opportunity surrounds you. IBM, GlaxoSmithKline, Pharmaceuticals, Duke Energy are just three of the many well-known companies that offer internships and hire our graduates. Within walking distance of campus, you can attend networking events or take advantage of internships. You can even launch your own business at Shaw University's Innovation and Entrepreneurship Center. At Shaw University, you will learn from dedicated professors and meet lifelong friends. 
You can take part in over 30 different academic and service organizations. Get involved in Greek life, sports, or the Platinum Sound Shaw University's notable marching band. From its start as the first historically black university in the southern United States to the vibrant campus we are today, Shaw University is the right place to grow, learn, and explore. Okay, so that was just a little bit about Shaw University. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our admissions um, process. So our minimum GPA requirement is a 2.0 GPA. Uh, we are test optional due to COVID-19. So this year and next year as well, uh, we will be test optional. So um, if you haven't been able to take your test due to the pandemic, um, just that's fine. Just let us know um, and we will uh, work with you um, as well. Um, also due to COVID, we actually stopped um, accept and letters of recommendations um, and essays as well. Um, so pretty much the only thing we would need if you did take your test scores, we would need that. And we will still need a official transcript from your high school or from any previous uh, institution that you have attended before um, coming to Shaw University. Uh, we have about 21 different academic majors here at Shaw University. Our top five would be in biology, uh, mass communications, uh, computer science, education, social work. Um, so those are some of our top majors here at Shaw University. Another um, good point of view um, here at Shaw University, all students uh, must complete an internship. Um, they must complete internship hours um, in order to graduate. Um, and that's a way that uh, Shaw University helps our students find jobs and employment, uh, even grad school after um, completing a four-year degree here at Shaw University. Uh, we are Division II. We're part of the CIAA. Shaw University has a combined of 60 CIAA championships with all 13 sports. Um, the 13 sports that we have, um, the women's sports, we have women's basketball, volleyball, soccer, tennis, bowling, cross country, track and field. And for the guys sports, we have basketball, football, soccer, tennis, cross country. So we do offer academic scholarships as well as athletic scholarships. So in order to qualify for athletic scholarship, um, you will have to uh, contact our coach and our coaches will um, talk with our financial aid team and get all of that. Uh, we do offer uh, merit-based scholarships at Shaw University. So once you apply to Shaw University, the admissions office will send you a letter um, stating the amount of money that will be in the merit-based that Shaw University will offer. Um, my information is actually in the corner here, so you could send me an email if you want to know um, where you will stand uh, with the GPA or your test scores. Uh, we are the first historically Black college um, founded in the South. We was founded on Monday, December 1st, 1865, and we are under the leadership of Dr. Dillard. Shaw University have a total of 1,300 students on campus. So we're a small private um, liberal arts university. Uh, we have a 15 to one student ratio. So class sizes are very small. And at Shaw University, uh, you are not a number, um, you are a name and we take pride in that. So Shaw University is a family oriented um, university. So we are downtown. Um, so we are walking distance from PNC uh, Bank, from state employees, uh, from Red Hat, from different organizations um, that actually come to our campus and ask students, uh, you know, they need internships. Um, so Shaw University is the right place for you to go if you're looking for that small family oriented school. Again, I am Ryan Wright, a missions counselor, and thank you for joining us today.
Thank you very much, Shaw University. And thank you to all of our panelists for your great presentations. I know six minutes is not very long, but I think uh, you all were able to give the attendees a good taste of your institutions. We do have some time remaining, so attendees, please do feel free to keep those questions coming through the Q&A. Uh, I could ask all of our panelists to turn their videos back on and we can do a round or two of questions here ourselves while we're waiting to see what other questions our attendees have. Uh, so the first question, uh, again, six minutes is not very long. So what's one thing you did not have time to present on that you'd like to cover now that could be your favorite event or tradition on campus, a fun fact about your school, et cetera. So why don't we go in that same order, starting with Davidson Davy. Sure, thank you. Um, so I guess I would just want to reiterate and further discuss the great academic opportunities that we have at Davidson Davy that will really help launch you on whatever pathway you choose to go in. Um, so I know I covered a couple of the special criteria programs, um, as well as some of the partnerships, but one that I really admire is our zoo and aquarium science program that's on campus. We actually have an aquarium on campus. Um, we have a lot of tropical animals on campus, so a lot a lab where you're able to actually work hands on with those animals. And we also have a partnership with Winston-Salem State University. So if you graduate through our Zoo and Aquarium Science Program at Davidson Davy, you can actually transfer easily into the Pre-Veterinary Science Program at Winston-Salem State University. And that's just one example of the numerous um, opportunities for students in that easy transfer pathway. Um, we actually just signed an agreement with Lise McRae that has a wonderful wildlife um, program as well. Um, so in speaking with Zoo and Aquarium Science, which is a sought after field and our students are finding wonderful job placement after, that's just a really unique opportunity for students um, looking to work with animals. Great, thank you. Uh, full sale. So something I did not get the chance to go over is our admissions requirements. Uh, for any of our bachelor's degrees, degree programs, we do require either a high school diploma or GPA equivalent, or sorry, GED equivalent. Uh, we do not require a minimum GPA score. All applicants are considered equally. Um, we also are test optional, but if you were to submit your test, we don't have a minimum score requirement. Since we are a creative school, it is hard to measure creativity from those tests. Um, if you were a student going into one of our coding intensive programs, that would be game development, computer science, or simulation and visualization. You do have to do a preliminary math assessment just to kind of gauge your skills and see where you're at. But otherwise, any of our other programs are portfolio optional. Um, you don't have to submit one, but if you have work that you'd like to show off, totally cool, we'd love to see it. So those are pretty much our admissions requirements, but the, the number one thing for all programs is an admissions interview. So all students do that. It's actually the first step in the process, and that's how we gauge you know, if we are a good fit for you and vice versa. Great, thank you. Martin? Yeah, so I would just like to kind of uh, also just talk about a little bit more information about our financial aid fees, uh, in particular more of uh, scholarships for our students. So actually all of our students are gonna be receiving an academic scholarship from our office. Uh, so once we have a student admitted into the program, we will also let them know upon their acceptance phone call what their academic scholarship will be. Um, our academic scholarships range anywhere between five to $14,000 thousand dollars in our renewable per academic year as long as you maintain your minimum GPA as a 2.5 on our on our campus. Um, you do also have the opportunity to increase your academic scholarship before coming to Barnard if you have updated uh, test scores for the SAT or ACT or you have an updated GPA that is something different from when you were first accepted into the college. Um, and then the last thing is just like one little small tradition that I always love. I'm also an alum of Barton myself. So one really amazing tradition that we have on our campus is uh, actually the Sunday before the very first day of classes on Monday, we have our naming and induction ceremony where we have all of our incoming students who are starting for that semester um, lining up on campus and they walk across our main platform um, on our campus and into our chapel. Um, it's not a religious service, but it's actually what happens where our president and provost of the institution stand up and one by one introduce the student formally into our campus. Um, and then right afterwards, you guys do a reception at the president's house. Uh, but why that's so special is because from one end of the platform that you start to enter into the chapel and upon graduation, you cross the platform on the opposite side. So it actually symbolizes your start and your beginning, your ending at Barton College. Great, thank you. UNCG. 
Yeah, um, one thing I do want to emphasize as, is we are the most uh, diverse university out of all the um, out of all the schools in the UNC system. So I always encourage students to come on campus uh, and really get that feel. Um, I feel like when you come on campus, you can really understand how it could become your home. Um, we are also one of the very few UNC schools that have stayed open throughout um, COVID-19. So uh, we are in a hybrid model. So some classes are still in person and some are um, online, but we are offering on-campus tours um, Monday through Friday and some selected Saturdays. And we have had some on-campus events. So um, we have been doing, our students have been doing a great job of um, staying safe and we've had regular COVID testing. We've also offered um, COVID vaccines to our incoming freshmen for the fall. So um, a lot of great work on the university's end. Great, thank you. And Shaw. Yes, yeah, so I want to uh, say and encourage everyone to uh, go to all of the different schools here today, and just schedule a campus tour, just to see um, campus tours. So our tours are now open on Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 10, I mean, to 2 p.m., I'm sorry. Um, you can schedule a campus tour um, at Shaw University. Um, another thing is uh, that I like about Shaw University is our CRC program. So there are six um, schools in the surrounding area. I like to call it the circle. Um, so it's six schools, so Shaw University, NC State, Wake Tech, Meredith, um, St. Aug and William Peace. So if you know if Shaw University does not offer a class or any of the other schools doesn't offer a class, for that semester, you can find another one of the other five schools um, and take a class free of charge and then have that class transferred. So that's something um, that all six schools have benefited um, from for the last five to four years, four to five years. Um, so that's a great program um, that all of the six schools have. Thank you. And your comments, last two comments about visiting campus leads me into my last question. Um, what's one piece of advice you have as someone who uh, is well informed about the admissions process and choosing colleges? What's one piece of advice you have for someone going through the college search process now? Uh, Davidson, Davey? Sure. So I'll just say keep your options open. So I've worked now at public institutions, private institutions, and now community college. Um, and there is a great fit for everyone. And, I, and when I say great fit, a lot of students put a lot of pressure on themselves to find their best fit school. And what I'll say is there are a lot of great fit schools for everyone. So you might come down to the wire between two. Um, keep your options open because either one might be a really great fit for you. You just need to decide what's gonna be your best option for your future and you can't go wrong because there are so many wonderful schools that you've heard from this evening and both in the continental US and um, internationally that are really great options for you to pursue your education. Thank you. Full sale. So my advice would be to apply to as many scholarships as you possibly can at all of the schools that you are looking into. I know sometimes it could feel like a pain to keep writing all of those essays, but you know it's a little bit of a time commitment now that could pay off in a huge way. You know, best case scenario is that all of your tuition is paid for. So apply to as many as you can at the universities, in your community, national ones, anything you can. Yeah, definitely. And good practice for applying for fellowships and things like that later. Uh, Barton? Yeah, so I like to give a little advice, uh, both with the parents and for, for the parents and then also for students as well. I would say for the students, definitely um, explore all of the college options that are out there. Do, definitely do not limit yourself. But if there's any parents on the call, I always like to give them, say this to the students with the parents listening, that let's try to limit your physical visits to schools to about three to five schools. I feel like doing eight to 10 school visits is kind of a lot for kids to try to do. And it's just really overwhelming for those students and, and your parents as well. So definitely try to limit and hit your key schools that you truly have that general interest in overall, um, for sure. Uh, and then, of course, when it comes to just going through about the admissions process, I tell all of my students this all the time, is there's no such thing as a silly or stupid question. And never be afraid to reach out to whoever, whoever your main point of contact is at the institution that you're applying to. I'm sure all of us have maybe directly over um, 
like overseas student recruitment and things like that. So if you have a certain point of contact at an institution, never be afraid or feel like you need to reach out to, uh, to another like third party platform to ask any of your questions. Because your main point of contact is really gonna come from the admissions office. And our biggest goal is to be able to answer whatever silly question that you may have. For a prime example, I have a student who texted me about eating cereal in the cafeteria at 1 a.m. Um, it was just something really important on that student's mind. And I happily answered whenever I got back to the office the next day. Thank you. Are you NCG? Yeah, I think um, the representatives uh, touched on really key points. Uh, one thing I do want to also mention, I mentioned in my presentation, you also want to visit um, visit the city, right? Is Or visit wherever the college is located. Um, are there fun things to do? For myself, I was born and raised in Southern California, and I decided to go to UNC Greensboro. One thing that was important for me is that there was different activities or just lots of fun stuff to do on the weekends because I knew I wasn't going to be able to go home. Another thing that I wanted to make sure was there was an uh, internship opportunity. So because UNCG is so close to downtown, there is tons and tons of um, internship opportunities and you can see a lot of um, opportunity for employment right after graduation. So. Um, you just want to make sure that if you don't like the mountains, and, but you like the school in the mountains, you might want to go visit the school, but also go on a weekend and see what you want to do around, around um, you know, that area. So uh, it's very important, I think, not only to visit the school, but visit um, where the school is located in. Yeah, definitely. Shaw? Um, yeah, so I agree with with. Everyone, um, I would also like to say this may be, <laughs> I say this a lot, go to the staff directory on the website um, and just find someone and just send an email to, because um, customer service and customer care uh, for me is very important. So go to the staff directory, find someone, the, if you're one to major in biology, find a biology um, professor and email them uh, to see, you know, could you get information about that program and just just to see how you know the the staff and faculty operates to see if they're friendly you know if they're not going to respond because customer service and customer care is is key and i'm sure each one of these uh institutions uh strive and make sure and make sure that they are 100 percent um in compliance with customer uh service and customer care so i will say um you can do that <laughs> Great, thank you. Uh, thank you again to all of our panelists for spending this time sharing information about your schools and also certainly thank all of our attendees for joining us. We're glad you were able to carve out some time to learn about these institutions. I just wanna reiterate what they all said. Uh, please don't hesitate to contact the schools. I'm sure they'd be happy to continue these conversations with you. Uh, just a few quick housekeeping items before we end this session. When you do close your window, you will receive a very quick four question survey that we ask you to take a minute to complete. And again, there are two other blocks of sessions this evening. So if you haven't signed up for those yet, please feel free to do so. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same registration website. But thank you again, everybody, and to all of our attendees, good luck in your college search. Have a great evening.